Let's talk to Hayden in Margaret River, Australia. Hayden, you're live with Eric and V. Hi, V. Hi, Eric. It's uh, pretty exciting to be on the line to you guys. Oh, thank you. Thank Hello. You. It, it looks like you've got a question that may need to go a little bit more towards V. What did you want to ask? It to, what did you want to ask today? Absolutely, and it's something that I've um, heard. Uh, <clears throat> pardon me, I probably need some water. Uh, that I've heard uh, V opine on before. Um, uh, so, um, to, to give you the uh, the rapid pitch of um, the background here, mm -hmm. since leaving religion a number of years ago and practicing my skepticism more, I've had no issues at all leaving behind uh, uh, any sort of spirituality and ritual for myself. Um, and and uh, uh, however, my wife uh, in the uh, friend she's made recently has really taken an interest in tarot. Um, mm -hmm. Now she doesn't believe that she's going to predict the future here. Um, but I want to be a little bit more empathetic, something I pro could probably practice more. Um, and I was hoping that they, maybe you could frame that in a way for me that I can better get my head around how that's useful to people who are atheists or skeptics or generally don't have any belief in the supernatural. Absolutely. That's a really good question, Hayden. And I love that you're kind of engaging with this because your wife is and you're like, I want to be supportive, but also not just accept things because, you know, a partner is doing it. Um, that's a very healthy way to go about that. Um, thank you. Uh, so, yeah, um, here's my pitch for how I use tarot. And I do want to make sure that I caveat this with the, uh, you know, caveat that your wife might be using him differently. Um, in which case you would have to have a conversation with her to see exactly what she thinks about it. Um, but the way that I use it, there is absolutely no supernatural element to it. There is nothing powerful about the cards themselves. There's no magic involved, but what they allow me to do and for myself and for other people I've found um, is look at a situation in a new light. So each of the cards has a picture on it that corresponds with a little bit of like a story. So say you get the two of coins as a card. The card is telling you the mini story, like the flash fiction version of, hey, there's a person, it could be you, it could be somebody else who is juggling just one too many things right now, probably related to money. And, you know, they're kind of feeling off balance, right? So that's what the story that the card is just telling you. And then you get to look at that card and you, you get to say, am I feeling off balance right now? Is the stress related to money? Is there something in my life that I can put down so that I don't have to juggle as many things right now? And that can actually spark a whole chain of thoughts and solutions that you wouldn't have thought of without that mini story kind of giving you that prompt to think about it in that way. So that's how I use it. And I found it to be very useful, um, especially if I find myself in like a, a mental spiral where I'm just kind of going over the same five thoughts over and over again. Um, it gets me out of that circular path and off onto, you know, it doesn't, it's not always the right path, but it's a different path that lets me look at things in a different way. Does that make sense? No, no, it absolutely does. And uh, the way I was looking at this was uh, as a sort of a, a touchstone or a focal point uh, similar to that, but that really uh, colors things a little bit more. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, that that's interesting. It's uh, it can just be a challenge for me to find a a, a way to look at these things uh, and and see the exact utility of it and be as sympathetic as I'd like. Um, uh, and, and yeah, you you're right. It's um, the the idea of using it as a jumping off point for further thoughts is um, yeah something I hadn't looked at. Um, thank you yeah. so much. I, Absolutely. I, I really don't know that I have much more to add to that discussion. I, I, yeah, I, I, there's I'd like, like to chime in a little bit. Absolutely. I do want to give yeah. like one more little disclaimer here, which is that the tricky thing with this is that you need to use it responsibly, right? If you have 
uh, if you want to use tarot cards, you want to learn how to use them. Absolutely, you can. But that does give you a little bit of power, especially because the concept of tarot as something supernatural that can predict the future or look into your soul or whatever is so unfortunately prevalent that you could technically go up to somebody and tell them their future, quote unquote, and they w might believe you. So while it's absolutely okay to use a tool in a healthy way, because there's nothing inherently moral or amoral about a tool, um, you do have to be aware, uh, whether you're reading tarot or whether, you know, you are engaging with somebody who is that it does provide the person with a little bit of that extra power because we live in a supernatural, uh, uh, skeptic. People have a supernatural mindset when they superstitious. approach superstitious. Okay. Super, that's the word. Superstitious culture that will approach tarot cards more often than not as something magical. So as long as you're yeah. educating people about what you're doing and how to use it, I say go for it. Yeah, I, I mean, it, just the way our brains work is it fills in the blanks, you know, and when you have something that is as generic as those little mini stories for each card, um, you can shift things to apply it to yourself any number of ways and so you're absolutely right um the, the only i that was actually what i was gonna say <laughs> so that's good um the only other thing i would i would add is if somebody's still watching this and is going i really don't understand um here's another way of of looking at it um if you are, are faced with a decision and you have two choices flip a coin now when that coin's in the air which one do you hope it lands on you know, it, it's it's interesting how there are times that I didn't know that I wanted to make a specific decision, but I flip a coin and before revealing it, mm -hmm. I realized, no, actually, this helped me. I, I now know that I want to go with X and not Y. And um, it's it's just a prompt to help you kind of figure that out. So that's all. Yeah, Absolutely. Right. Well, uh, thank you both so much for your input on that. Um, I'm going to try and take that away and try and approach this uh, better than I probably have. <laughs> well, thank, thank you, you so much for calling in. It's a really interesting conversation. I love it. Um, yeah. Anyone who has questions about tarot and skepticism, get in touch. Like, that's definitely a conversation I want to keep having. Yeah. In the meantime, uh, Hayden, right. thank you so much for calling in. All right. You guys have a lovely day. <laughs> you too. Bye. Bye. That actually reminds me of um, brujeria, um, that there are uh, plenty of uh, Latino cultures and I'm sure other cultures, but in my experience, mm -hmm. um, you know, cultures that have kind of that Spanish descent where they'll actually use playing cards to do the same kind of thing. And it yeah. just, it, it, it doesn't matter what it is, you know, our, our brains are just so good at making connections that as long as you have that prompt, it can help you. And what's wild is there are people who just really do believe it. And, and well, I guess it's not that wild. There was a time when I wondered whether or not it was real and, and same. you know, it, it, it wasn't until I stumbled upon a skeptic podcast um, and somebody said, that's not real. And I looked at that and went, oh, you're right. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. I, but like it, there's a whole other kind of magic that happens when you realize, oh, this is me manipulating my own brain into doing the things that I want it to do and making me feel the way I want to feel. And that's honestly so much more empowering than being like, oh, I guess I've harnessed to this random earth magic or, or whatever, yeah. you know, like, I don't know. For me, the realization that it was me being able to change the way I was interacting with the world that made it all click. I, what, what really worked actually that was a huge difference for me was when you did a tarot card reading for me Yeah, and I looked at it and two things happened. Number one, there was a generic story of, you know, somebody being a really bad influence in your life. And I went, Oh, I know who it is. And then I stopped and went, Oh, that's a really toxic person in my life. I need to not have that person in my life, you know, but it, it took that prompt. And the other was, you know, well, what about the future? What's the future going to be like? Yeah. And it was super vague and it didn't really fit. And we we're like trying to do backflips until I settled into what I hoped my future would be like. And I was able to set goals after that because I had a clear idea of, Hey, here's where I want to be in 10 years. Uh -huh. And, um, I've, 
moved forward after that with a better understanding of what my wants are and what my needs are and what direction I'm going to be going in. Yeah, you had a pretty good experience. I did. I did. 